Hello everyone and welcome back. We're going to continue building out our color application. This video we're going to accomplish several things by adding new little bug fix features for lack of a better term and then we're going to do some major refactoring. So first we're going to remove the message whenever you reset because right now let's look at our application. If I win and I get new colors it still says I suck. Or if I lose and get new colors, it still says I suck. If I win and get new colors, it still says correct. So basically, when on our new colors button, we need to add a piece of code that will get rid of that. So let's do that real quick. Where is the new colors button? It is, do we call it reset? What, reset button. So let's find that. Reset colors button. And on our add event listener, which we're clicking, the next one thing we're going to do, we just have to add a line that gets that message dot text content equals nothing. Empty string. So let's try this. Hit it again, and now it's empty. Perfect. So it doesn't matter if we win or we lose. Anytime we hit it, it'll empty that out. Done. Make the new colors button say play again after you win. Because if you look on here, after you win, this updates to play again because we just want it to. Over here, when we win, it doesn't. It stays new colors. We're just going to add a little bit of code to the um, check with, to the check that if it wins and whenever it wins, it's just going to update that. So that's down near the bottom, if I remember correctly. Yeah, setting up the squares, the squares event listeners. Um, so if the click color equals pick color, in other words, if you win, we're doing this stuff. So one thing we also want to do is change the reset button dot text content equals play again. Refresh and let's try it. Yep. But now it just says play stays play again. So we need to go up there to the reset button. There's hard, there's easy, there's reset. And whenever it's clicked, this dot text content equals reset colors. So now we've got new colors, reset color. Okay, we want to say new colors new colors. So now we got new colors, now it says play again, but whenever you click it, it makes it say new colors. So there, that is done. Reset play again message after clicking the button. Ah, we actually just did that. I did those two together. And finally, this one you probably haven't noticed, some of you probably haven't noticed, unless you're using a different browser, because I'm testing this in Firefox, um, and this, this isn't an issue. When I click on the buttons, nothing happens. But on Chrome and another and a few other browsers, I think it does it in Safari too, a blue outline pops up on the button. So let me just show you that real quick. Let's copy this over to Chrome. Oh, I already got it. Okay. Refresh. And if I click on the new colors button, you get that weird outline that stays there. You click on easy, you click on hard. It just stays there until you click somewhere else. That's just the browser. That's not our code. That's the browser interpreting our code. So to fix that, we're going to come over to our CSS and on our buttons, add one more. Outline none. And that will just tell Chrome, hey, I don't want you to outline my stuff when it's clicked. I want you to shut up and leave us alone. So let's refresh, new colors, and we don't get that annoying outline anymore. Now, I'm done with you, Chrome. Go away. And that's it for that part. Now we're going to do all of our refactoring. There are several things we want to refactor. We're going to refactor our easy and hard buttons. If you remember, our easy and hard buttons are basically just the same thing with a few um, with a few things different. It's the same, a lot of the same code, a lot of duplicated code. So we're going to refactor those. We're going to create a single function that does all of our resetting. So instead of um, putting the event listener in here, um, on easy and hard and, and, and writing the same code over and over again, we're just going to create a function and call it whenever we're clicking those buttons and we need to get new colors. We're going to create a function that hides the bottom three on easy mode, create a function that shows the bottom three on hard mode. Now these are already baked into the hard mode easy mode event listeners. We're just going to break them out to make it a little bit easier to maintain. We're going to replace the content of reset button with just a call to that reset function that we're making. And finally, we're going to put all of our execution code, all the code that runs to, to kind of initialize the app inside of a main function. This is not something you have to do in JavaScript. Some people like it, some people don't. Normally, the people who like it come from a different language as their background, like C++ or Java or something like that that requires a main function. You don't have to do this in JavaScript. 
I just dislike to sometimes, especially if I'm building single page applications. And I wanted to show it to you as because it, it's an option and it depends on where you work, whether you have to do this or not. For your own personal projects, if you like it, do it. If you don't, don't. But whenever you're working somewhere, you have to follow their conventions and their style. So let's get going. Easy hard buttons. First thing I'm going to do is come over here into my HTML and for these buttons, add a class called mode. And I'm no longer going to be using these IDs. I don't need these because I'm going to select both of these buttons with mode. Because all I'm using those IDs for is selecting these buttons here. So we're going to get rid of those. We don't, we're not going to select them there anymore. Instead, we're going to get them both. Const mode buttons equals document dot query selector all mode. Now we've got both of our mode buttons right there. And down here where we are adding event listeners to easy button and hard button, for now we can just comment all this out. We're going to remove it later. Let's just comment it out and add these event listeners for the buttons. Um, mode buttons will be our, our comment. So mode buttons dot for each and basically inside here we're going to do a arrow function for each button do something. So for each button we're going to add an event listener. Button dot add the event listener. The event listener is going to be for when you click on it in the callback function. Remember you want traditional function declarations whenever you're adding event listeners. I've said that a thousand times and I'm going to continue to say it every time I do it because it's very important that you do this, that you get in the habit of this. So the first thing we want to do is to set the selected the selected class. Remember, the selected class tells us which one we clicked on. So the easiest way to do this is to simply remove it from both and then add it to the one we clicked on. That's the, the quickest, easiest way to do that. So mode buttons zero dot class list dot remove selected. And I duplicate that in one. So this is just saying for both buttons, remove the selected class. And then this dot class list dot add selected. This says get it off of both and then only add it to whichever one I clicked on. And then if this dot text content is equal to easy, and this is how we can tell which button we're clicking on. So in other words, if we click the easy button, num squares equals three, else num squares equals six. And then we're going to call our reset function, which we have not made yet. We haven't made this function yet, but we're going to go ahead and call it here because once we make it, this is where it's going to be called. I need to add some semicolons all over the place. I'm bad about my semicolon usage. JavaScript lets me get away with it because they're not required, but it's still a good practice to get into. So that is our buttons refactoring. We no longer need all of this code. It can go away. So we've taken care of our easy hard buttons. Unfortunately, we can't really test this yet because we haven't created our reset function. But once we create a reset function, we'll, we'll run through some tests. So go away. And now it's time to create a reset function. That's one of our helper functions. I'll just stick it down here at the bottom. Const reset equals, it's gonna be an arrow function. And now let's figure out exactly what we want to do. First, we need to get new colors. So colors equals generate random colors and num squares. We want that many random colors. Now we're going to pick a color. Picked color equals pick color. And then we're going to change the reset button right here. We can go ahead and put that right here. Put that in here instead of adding it down there. So we'll go ahead and remove it down there in just a second. But we want to change the reset button dot text content to new colors. And let's come down here and remove that from right here because we no longer need it on there. I know I just added it, but I just wanted you to, to see that before we refactored it. Color display, which is this part right here color display dot text content equals the picked color and then 
we need to loop through our squares and set their colors. For let i equal zero, i is less than squares dot length, i plus plus. And then we're going to see first off if there is a color. And this just comes straight from um, the code we wrote earlier. If colors i, so if the color exists in the array, squares i dot style dot background color equals colors i. So if the color exists, set the background color of that square to that color. If the color doesn't exist, squares i dot style dot background color equals black. And just set it equal to the background. And then finally we want to set the background of our h1 up there. h1 dot style dot background color equals steel blue. And then we want to remove the message there. Message display dot text content equals nothing. And you'll note that this stuff, most of the stuff that we did, we're doing down here in the reset button. We added that to the reset button event listener and we just kind of packed it all in there. So we're getting rid of that. All this, bye bye. And we're just calling reset. That's all we're doing. Whenever the reset button runs, we're just calling reset. So let's go ahead and test it out. Let's see if it works. You saw it correct. Play again. Hmm. It did not update the H1, and it did not get this. So let's look at our console, see if we have... H1 is not defined. Um, I probably named something wrong. Line 55. H1 dot style dot background color steel blue. Yep. It's supposed to be called title. That's why. Had a brain fart. Let's refresh, click new colors, there we go. All right, cool. Let's get the right one, play again. Yep, works fine. So instead, I just had a brain fart and called it, and then once it hit that, it stopped and didn't run either of these two lines. That's why the message was not being updated and why this wasn't being run. It didn't know what H1 was because I gave it the wrong, I referenced the wrong variable. So our reset button is done. Our reset function, rather, is done. One thing to note is that right now in this reset colors button, we are adding an event listener that whenever somebody clicks, calls a function, and all that function does is call another function. That's redundant. We don't need to have a function that calls another function, and that's its only purpose. That's its only uh, function. So instead of that, we're just going to reference reset right there. Notice we are not we are not calling reset right here. We are just referencing it because this will, Advent Listener will run whatever function you reference. You don't have to add your um, parentheses there. So let's make sure this works. You suck, you suck. New colors. Yep, and it resets it. Let's win. Play again. Yep, and it resets it. So we cleaned up our code a little bit there and got rid of our redundant function. Now down in our mode buttons, we actually went ahead and set this up when we were creating them because we went ahead and called reset. As I mentioned before, when we were making this, we called this even though it didn't exist yet. But now, when we click on these buttons, it automatically does that. Easy or hard, it automatically calls reset. So we're good to go. So those two, we already did. Replace the content of reset button with just a call to reset, we did that. And finally, we're going to create build and call a main function. Again, this is not a main function is not required in JavaScript like it is in a lot of other languages because everything in this um, entire document JavaScript file is considered main. You can look into the behind the scenes on how the everything runs, but basically it's all a main. But it's a good idea sometimes to have a main function. That way it just makes it a little bit easier on you when you're messing with the code. This is not required for writing JavaScript code, but I want you to do it this time so you can do it just so you can see that it, that it happens. So after our variables and here's main. So down here in the main section we're going to create our main function. Now one thing to note we're going to use an old school function declaration. The reason for this is that if we use an arrow function it can lead to errors if we add other functions later higher up or lower down or anything like that so we want to make sure that we use for our main function the traditional function de declaration. 
So we are going to move color display inside of there because when the page first loads, we want to update our colors. Because right now, before main ever runs, all of this runs. We're setting our state, we're selecting all our elements, and we're initializing our variables. And actually, we can go ahead and put these up here because they would be part of state. And then after that runs, our main function is going to run. And we're going to call it down below at the very last thing. So color display is being set. And then we add our reset button event listener. And then we add our mode buttons. And I'm going to keep the comment on this just to make it a little bit clearer. Oh, I don't need to because the variable is called mode buttons. That's kind of self-documenting right there. And then we need the squares. So this one I am going to include the comment because we want to make sure that we can tell quickly at a glance what this is doing. This is setting up the squares. We don't need to add to have this comment because we are obviously adding a click event listener. We don't need this comment because obviously we're getting the clicked color. We don't need this comment because we're comparing those right there, so it's obvious. And that's it. So let's delete this extra stuff. And all we have to do now is call main. Let's save and make sure it still runs. Does it work? Yay, play again. Yep, put it on easy mode. Yay, let's take it back over to hard mode. Works great. That is it. We are done. Hallelujah. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll be happy to help. Thanks.